everybody and welcome back to Sit and Knit for a Bit with Arne and Carl. This is our weekly podcast and we are, as always, your hosts Arne and Carlos. And remember, it's not necessarily a knitting podcast. I mean, a lot of things are going on here all the time. And uh, we do deal with loads and loads of different topics. Uh, so if you want to sit and do anything else, you don't have to sit and knit. You can do crochet, you can do embroidery, you can do your genealogy while you're watching us. Anything goes, really. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so firstly, I want to say that um, we realized as we sat down, to start filming this, we realized that the way the camera is placed, that uh, there was a big risk that uh, my bare legs were going to show. <laughs> so I had to yeah. run away into the my, my bedroom to put yeah. on a pair of pants. So did I. I have jeans on. Yeah. So today we're definitely wearing <laughs> pants. And you know what, Arne? It's so funny because Norway really has such a bad reputation when it comes to climate. Yeah, but normally, like, we hardly wear clothes indoors. Yeah, because, because it's, it's so warm. It's warm inside. Yeah. So a lot um, of people go, oh, my God. How can you live in Norway in the winter? It's so cold. It's, you know, because they've never been here, they don't really know. Actually, when I worked in the fashion school in Oslo, a colleague from Paris, from France, from Nice, she mm. was like the first. Corinne. Corinne, the yeah, first, yeah. maybe the first two winters. So she was so fascinated by the, <laughs> what she saw. So she was walking around in the streets at night looking into people's windows and there was like people wearing just their underwear. I know. Walking around in the flat with all the yeah. lights on and that's yeah. another thing like if you if you come to Norway there's light in every house you have a lot of lights yeah the... Norway is overheated and over lighted <laughs> over I mean really um, I, and I think I know why I think it's because Norway imports electricity to or exports electricity to to a lot of Europe so uh, apparently we have so much of it yeah. and I know is another reason it's because it's so dark in the winter so we want to have light yeah but anyway yeah it, it's we're a big exporter of electricity we have a lot of waterfalls and things so apparently electricity is cheaper here than in many other parts of Europe so we really light up when we light up in Norway <laughs> we really light it up and it's funny because we have uh, we have a few new neighbors yeah. um, the thing about our valley okay so yeah it is cold here um, and uh, because of that people tend to live longer uh, at least where we live so our neighbors uh, we had close neighbors who died um, a few years ago, one of them was 102, <laughs> the other one was 99. I, I I, no, no, they, you know, yeah. no, no, they were. And now we've gradually been getting new neighbors and we've got a Dutch couple who moved into uh, a house uh, very near where we live. And uh, yeah, we, we can see that they're clearly not Norwegian because it's <laughs> Actually, pitch dark. They told us. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, when we pass through our, their house, there's almost no lights anywhere. And if you pass through our ha house, we will have lights everywhere. And with the lake, it's even more if you go on the other yeah. side, because you get the reflections in the water. So it I looks know. like it's a lot of lights. Mm. It's double. Yeah, but we're working okay. on our environmental profile. So we've got <laughs> geothermal heating so that we don't actually uh, use much electricity to heat our house. Uh, solar panels is something that actually, we... Actually, we were talking about having those lamps outside with yeah. solar panels. We should look into that. Yeah, and I think so. we should install some big solar panel things as well. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, it is, it is warm indoors. And I've never been as cold as I was. Um, I remember it clearly. Uh, 2007 in New York City or 2016 in Washington, D.C. I mean, mm -hmm. just take your pick. It was January. It was humid. It was windy. It was cold. I read that time in Washington was really cold. Yeah. And we were on our way to Mexico. Yeah, for a holiday. For a holiday. And I got a bad, bad beagle or something. Or a bad... We bought something in the railway Oh, yeah, you got food poisoning. I got yeah. food poisoning. And when we came to Washington, D.C., it was so cold. Yeah. And I was so sick. Mm -hmm. That was horrible. Yeah, and I've never been as cold as that in, in cold. Washington, D.C. Or, or that New, New York witty, sorry, New York City winter. Um, and it was incredibly cold. And then people say, but why are you complaining? You're from Norway. And I'm thinking, yeah, but our climate where we live is more like in the, in the, in the Alps here in Europe. We have, uh, it's cold, but we have dry weather. There's no humidity. There's barely any wind. And it usually is quite sunny. So if you're out in the sun, 
uh, it doesn't feel that cold. And also, when you don't have humidity and when you don't have wind, you can dress appropriately. You can wear your layers and your layers and your layers, and you will be warm. But if you are in New York City in January and this wind just comes towards you and, and it kind of goes through those avenues, it's right, like with the, the tunnel, skyscrapers right? on both sides, and it That's just cold. hits you and it <laughs> literally just cuts you like a knife See, and we complain a lot. yeah no matter what you wear you can't protect yourself <laughs> so yeah that's that's a little bit about uh the cold the cold here but it's been cold i mean what was it we were talking about i can't I even don't remember. remember anymore but it was cold it's... oh yeah it was about our pants oh yeah yeah that's how we started but that's not why we wear them because it's not cold indoors no it's that, warm that indoors that's what we were talking about yeah yeah because we're not wearing pants normally no, I think we're or... really digressing here. So, previously in our lives, we have Helmer. Helmer's here. Hello, Helmer. Helmer. He is He's... our long-term guest. He has been staying with us since August 28. Yeah. Uh, we do not know when he is going to leave us. He hasn't announced his departure date yet. However, Edgar, our groomer, is going to be grooming him on December 15th at the same time as he's going to be grooming Freya. Yeah. Because on December 15th, if all is well with COVID, uh, we will all be groomed. It's like a big family <laughs> grooming. We're going to Oslo. Um, I'm going to get my hair done. You're going to get your hair done. And then the dogs are going to get their things, you know, their no fur coats. But I heard on the radio that they probably closed down again. So. Yeah. So we may not look good this Christmas. We'll see. But, but anyway, the plan is to groom Freya and Helmer on December 15th, which means that he's probably staying with us for another month, yeah. I think. But he needs the grooming anyway. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He's a bit... Sooner or later. He's like, he's very hairy right now. Yeah. You can't barely see his eyes. <laughs> So what else happened? This what else week? happened? Yeah, we've been doing our folk costumes because right now we don't have anything else to do. Well, so... we have. We have a lot of things to do, but we like what prioritize. Oh yeah, we're prioritizing the folk, <laughs> folk costumes. costumes. <laughs> we're supposed to be building a, a, a porch, a veranda as well, Actually, an easy one without without ceiling. But yeah, just yeah. a roof. No, no roof. No, what you call floor? Just the, the flooring. So we, we yeah, just the started deck. to do the deck. Mm -hmm. That's it's it's coming. It's coming, yeah. And if if it's not, if if it's not finished this autumn, we can do it in the spring. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, hunters, no more. No. So we're taking our walks. It's getting colder and colder, so we are putting on more and more clothes. And the the, the walks in the woods are getting shorter and shorter because Freya. <laughs> she doesn't like it when it's. Cold. She really hates the cold. So <laughs> soon we're gonna start dressing her. Mm -hmm. And it's like choosing between the plague or cholera for her because she doesn't like the cold, but she doesn't like wearing her her sweaters. No. But so. she only has one layer. She only has one layer of fur. So if she doesn't wear something and it's really cold, she will be uncomfortable. So yeah. But it's kind of like uh, there's no win situation no. for her. And Helmer doesn't care. He's happy all the time. Yeah. So. Every time you say Helmer, he wags yeah. his tail. <laughs> And what else? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. A lot well, of... we don't travel anymore, so we're very happy when we get things in the post. Yeah. Because, like, when we traveled, especially me, I brought home souvenirs. Yeah. You that's did true. too. You say I'm an alcohol, sh shop, shop, not alcoholic, but shop shopaholic. Alcoholic. Well, you're a hoarder. But, but you, you're good too. Yeah, I've been doing my shopping as well. <laughs> um, lots of things. Um, yeah, and post is working pretty well. I mean, we're uh, we're not under lockdown, but the government here is struggling with COVID again. So they actually ask people to stay home, uh, and we have been staying home for very long time and uh, yeah we're not leaving other than to buy food so we are reliant on the post yeah. to make our life a little bit more interesting but it's so nice to get those packages in yeah the, in the post every week like I, I got my yarn for the Christmas ball knitting in the post in the post yeah finally I got the yarn I'm so happy with and it. for uh, all of you who are uh, waiting for the Christmas uh, advent calendar or who are already subscribing to our mailing list and were able to pre-purchase it uh, we're doing it in these colors I mean look at this color this is just and look at this mm -hmm. it's not Christmas red it's called deep rose it's alpaca soft decay but that it's that, a nice red. that red is just absolutely stunning mm -hmm. so we hope people will um, We'll consider this instead of the more traditional red. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we got this in the post. Then, we got more. then we got a very special <laughs> gift. Actually, got a lot of stuff in the post that we're gonna. So it's gonna be like an unboxing episode today. We're gonna be unboxing a few things to show you what we got because we want to share it. Um, and I think we should start by unboxing the very special gift. This one. 
that we got from YouTube this week. So you, you can open and, Sh and I show do this people. One? Yeah. Okay. This is so cool. So we got this gift and it actually says YouTube on it. Uh, and I think Kate from the last <laughs> Homely House, I'm sure she knows what this is. Yeah. Uh, and yes, Kate, it is. So <laughs> and, and you will have one soon. <laughs> so yeah. So there's a, a letter, and it is printed in a beautifully thick, high-quality paper. I love that. I'm gonna read it out loud to you guys. Um, hmm. And then we have this little gift, which I'm gonna open. It's in plastic. Have you seen it, Arne? I saw it, but yeah. I didn't, we didn't take it out. Of the plastic. There you it's go. It's very nice, and you can actually wash your. That's like a mirror. Oh my hair! <laughs> <laughs> your hair's great. So look at this. We got a silver play button from YouTube, and I don't know if you can see what it says. I'm going to read it out loud. It says, "Presented to Arne and Carlos for passing 100,000 subscribers." So this is a land stone. No, so, thanks, landmark. Thanks is it a landmark? All of you. What is it? A landmark? A Land... landmine? Not a landmark. A milestone. Sorry, this is a milestone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a milestone in our in our YouTube career. I mean, who would have thought that a couple of middle-aged men would become influencers? But there you go. That's funny, actually, because there's a lot of YouTubers and they're all, all are so young. Yeah. And like when they have these YouTuber things in Norway, we never invited. Because we're too old. I don't know why. We're is. not cool enough, you know. I guess not. But we have more viewers. <laughs> yeah, and nowadays, which is it, it's quite funny because nowadays, if you ask any eight-year-old what he wants to be when he grows up, he'll probably say YouTuber or influencer. Mm. And we didn't even know what that was when we were growing up, and now we are. No, we it's know. It's really it weird. Yeah. Anyway, we've got that lovely letter printed in a nice and thick paper, and oh, it's written by Susan Wojcicki. And she's the CEO of YouTube, so mm -hmm. wow, a very important <laughs> letter. Um, and I'm gonna read it out loud for I'm you. I'm gonna put this up in the studio when it's finished. We are, yeah. yeah. So, so do you wanna you wanna hear what she says? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm listening. I'm okay, listening. so dear Arne and Carlos, you have just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. Mm -hmm. We know that numbers on YouTube can get really big. But we hope that you don't lose sight of the reality behind that six-digit six milestone. Each and every person who has subscribed to your channel has been touched by what you created. Mm -hmm. They were inspired, challenged, or entertained. <laughs> That's good. You achieved this milestone with hard work, perseverance, and probably a healthy sense of humor, too. What you have accomplished can't be taken away from you. And we'd like to recognize you and all your hard work with this Silver Creator Award, a small token of our esteem and respect. We know that you don't do this for rewards. You do it because you have a drive to create and share and because you found an audience who cares. Mm -hmm. Believe us when we say that we can't wait to see what you do next. A million subscribers may seem a long way off right now, but you're closer than you think and we're rooting for you. Congratulations, yours sincerely, Susan Wojcicki, CEO YouTube. Thank you. Wow, that was a beautiful <laughs> letter. Thank you so much, but Susan. It, it's a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I see there's like a paper here. Yeah. Like you can have one in gold. <laughs> that, that, how many? That's a million. Maybe? That would be a million subscribers. And then there's a diamond also. Yeah. Then you need a lot of viewers. Look, yeah. Look at this. So you can have the gold. Or you can have the one with the diamond. But I'd rather just focus on have this one. I want to That's focus nice. on this one. I mean, as as Susan said in her letter, um, it's a milestone, not a not a mine. <laughs> what was it I said? It's a landmine. La it's not a, mi a landmine. It's a milestone, and not many people have it. So yeah, it's it's a, it's so an achievement. Happy. And thanks to all the viewers. Yes, we want to. If not, we wouldn't have it. Exactly. We yeah. want to dedicate our award <laughs> to uh, all you uh, subscribers and viewers because yes, as Arne said, without you, we would be somewhere else probably <laughs> yeah and when we finish the studio in in the future the near future i hope yeah. we will put it on the wall yeah we will so yeah great award uh we're very proud of it and uh it's dedicated to it, all of you should i put it back in the box no 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 why don't we just keep okay. it here so people can enjoy it you know um okay so just uh yeah. put the box somewhere for now and then no, we'll... because we have some more unboxing 
We have, yeah. We'll do that a little later. Um, do you have a plan? No, I have no plan. <laughs> There's never a plan here. It's nice to have this one in case. We... But I was thinking, I was thinking, since we were going on, you know, the previously in our life thing, we were talking about the uh, walks in the woods, the dogs, the hunters are not here. Uh, oh, we've been doing our full costumes, yeah. Buna. Maybe we could go through what we've done so far. Yeah, we, we finished the... Not quite. The shirts? The shirts are finished. We showed those <laughs> last week. Yeah, and now this is the vest or... West coats or waist coats or vests are vest. almost finished. We still have a little bit. Yeah, why don't power. you show yours? Yours is more finished than mine. So mine is finished now. I just need to put on the buttons. And for mine, you see, for mine, the the pattern on the pockets doesn't have to match the fabric. Yeah, let me explain it's so that, Arne. Small. I can explain this. Um, so, each region here in Norway has their own fabrics for the folk costumes. For the man's folk costume here in Gudbrandsdalen, where we come from, or where, we, where we're getting our costumes from, you can choose about 10 different brocade uh, fabrics for the waist, waist coast, mm. coat, or you can also choose uh, three or four different tartans, either with big squares or mm -hmm. smaller squares. Yeah. And then there's different traditions for how you sew them. If you do the tartan coat, it's a double, double waisted. I think most of I the tartan coats, seen double waist. the waist yeah. coats that are in tartan are double waisted. They've got these cu these um, things here, like uh, lapels, I think they're called. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and they're double waisted with two rows of buttons, and all the fabric has to match perfectly. So all the stripes going horizontally and vertically, they have to match one hundred percent. So that that is if you choose the That's um, like the tartan. This one. Yeah. My stripes are matching. Yeah, sure. exactly. So if you don't get the tartan, which we're getting later, mm -hmm. you get the brocade. And for the brocade, there's 10 different fabrics that you can choose from. Some fabrics have a bigger floral design and some fabrics have a smaller floral design. They're not double waisted, they're single waisted. And they don't have the this here, they have just like a shawl. Yeah, uh, nice. yeah like, like on my cardigan. Um, and the tradition is this, when you do a, um, a larger floral, like mine, I chose a large floral design in my fabric. And when you do that, the fabric has to be mirrored. That's the tradition. The fabric has to be mirrored on both sides and the pockets, the pocket flap here, as you can see, has to match perfectly. So uh, for this vest, it is purposely being cut so that it's mirrored and so that everything matches. On Arne's waistcoat, however, um, it it's, doesn't match. It's different because the tradition for that, sorry, well, I don't know where you hung it. Maybe here on the book. On the, anyway, so the tradition, <laughs> the tradition for Arnis fabric is that you take random pieces and you don't match anything. So maybe you can show it again. We can try to find yeah. it. See, on this one, it doesn't doesn't match the fabric. But then also, and and in the back, you see, it's wool. The so back is beautiful so Norwegian wool. It's not all wool. silk, it's, it's, it's wool in the back and then the brocade in the front. Yeah. And it's very, it's been challenging because... Very challenging. Like, like I, I did this one like over 20 years ago and it's so much easier because then I, I made the construction based on my size. Yeah, so you built, you designed so, the bed vest from scratch and you made the paper pattern. Yeah, and I did all the and... paper pattern based on my measurements and then we made a toile. Mm -hmm. So all the darts were in the in the pattern and there's like, we have this facing so it's easy to yeah. get rid of the, the, the excess fabric. The no, sorry, what are you talking Lining. Sorry, yeah, the line. <laughs> the excess lining, yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't show. Yeah. But for this one, you're like, they take your measurements, then they cut the fabric for from you. your measurements. Mm. But there's not a, a toile or a no. muslin. They don't make a, a t uh, one. They like don't make a, a sample. Sample in, in cotton, so you can try it on. So it's all it's all cut and and we just get it all cut. Yeah, so and you then get we... all the fabric, everything cut, and then you have to do the fitting. And, and then the instruction time. says, warning: this is not a new beginner's project. So if you don't have any no, skills, no, if you've never sewn you can't, before, yeah. I would never do. Because the it's because hard even for us. Yeah, the know. description is very non-descriptive. There's a lot of things you have to guess, and um, there has been. All, I mean, this is I would I would say that this is tailoring high level 
tailoring. It is um, incredibly hard work. So for Arne's waist coast, when we when he when Arne is sewn, I mean this part here is easy. You know, you do the, yeah, the, because the pocket. This one, this one you don't touch. Yeah, actually. but when you when he when he uh, sewn the front to the back and tried it on the first time, there was so much here. There was so much excess fabric coming here. And, and also up here. Yeah, and Arne has a little po posture problem, so there's a lot of issue here as well. So um, I think we spent half a day, no, maybe more, maybe a whole day, uh, kind of, you know, trying it on. We were trying the vest on Arne. Um, and, and then, then I think I was like, then I just said, no, it's, it's good. And then we tried it, I tried it on the next morning and then I wasn't happy again. Yeah. And the same happened with you now. Yeah, but yours was special because we started making these, um, we started making these uh, darts. darts longer to try to hide all the fabric and we just, you know, the, the, the work in this one was to get rid of all the excess fabric of the wool and we were working and working and suddenly these were coming up here and then it was getting too tight here and then we were working here as well, opening this up to try to get the fabric um, to disappear mm -hmm. and then once we'd done that and suddenly these, these darts were up here, then in the morning Arne woke <laughs> up and it's like, no, the darts have to be in the right place so we took them down again and we started uh, maybe working here as well on the sides and also in the center yeah and in the center so there's a lot of a lot of work con construction and then I tried mine on because I've been a little bit delayed because first we we decided Arne did his first because he's got he had yellow thread I had blue thread so um, when we started on mine Arne said I already know you know all the things that we might run into trouble so we can you know kind of help each other out and then I tried the vest the first time and Arne said it's perfect on you yeah. which I thought was a little bit odd but and it looked really nice and then, but I, then, then I slept on it no 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 not only that because right. we saw when we sewed the sides and I put it on um, the main issue with mine is the um, is the um, opening here on the, yeah, on the it, was, it looked kind of good on, when you wear the shirt but then it's too big. It, it was like too loose, so yeah. we decided to go in more in the side seams. And, yeah. But it, it's actually really fun. And then we had an issue here, that's why I'm a little bit delayed. Because we had an issue when we were sewing this part here, the bottom. Uh, suddenly something had happened probably with the, uh, the fliceline on the inside, the one that you iron on to give extra support. It must have done something yeah, suddenly, to the fabric. Uh, the, the fabric on the inside, like the facing, was bigger yeah. than the outside, so I had to open it again and get rid of yeah. fabric. So, so I've been like more m modeling, is yeah. that what you call it? Yeah. Like yeah, shaping it. Shaping it, and and I'm very I mean, it over again. But I mean, I know how to sew, and I I know how to sew difficult things. But I must say, I'm incredibly grateful that Arne has tailoring skills, because. Um, I mean, your yours was challenged, be, challenging because you, I had to, I had to be your eyes. Yeah, I had to yeah. tell you in the back where the where to remove, where, where the, fabric to remove the fabric in order to, because I understand that, and and then you were doing it. But in my case, um, when you started seeing me, you know, when I tried it on, mm -hmm. and you started seeing it, and there's these issues that are quite impossible to. I mean, you can't just leave it like that. And how are you going to fix it? It's <laughs> a lot of. It's a lot of fitting and a lot of fitting and sewing and Arne yeah. has been taking over and helping me out to get the fitting right for my vest and I'm very very grateful for that. So because you can't you so do much. that yourself. No, 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 it's, it's impossible. You can't work on the back. So, so uh, we, were, help? we were, yeah we do, um, but we were unlucky, we were unlucky that both of us needed extra work, but we were lucky that mine is the more difficult one now, because at least with your skills you can make it hmm. happen quicker than I could make yours happen yeah so um, but it, it's kind of it's uh, like it's fun to make make it but it's yeah. also frustrating when you get find these problems and yeah. but then when you solve them it's really yeah for, for fulfilling yeah that fulfilling <laughs> I think I think also if I calculated all the hours I've spent with the iron and steaming I think probably I've worked non I mean if I put all those hours non-stop I think it's a it's a full eight hours that I have been working um, just shaping this collar here has been um, a lot of work and I, I I have seen in earnest that we need to do a little bit more of that so I'm gonna be doing that I'm gonna that's be, like the last finish. that's that but that is very important yeah. finish so you need to use the iron the steam to start shaping everything and getting all the all the lines to go the right way or you know you can't this can't show and i think we're going to save the yeah. buttonholes and the buttons until 
Yeah. Like in the end, in case we want to change mm. something. So this so is that's been yeah. And this is supposed to be a things. relaxing project. This is not <laughs> something that we're supposed to stress. And uh, what has happened is that we are now behind a schedule that we weren't actually going to have. So today was the day we were going to start the trousers. And in the, this morning, I said to Arne, you know what? Screw that schedule. We don't, we're not supposed to have a schedule. We're doing this for fun. And if we don't start the trousers today, it's not the end of the world. If we don't start them tomorrow, it's not the end of the world. We will be f finished before Christmas, but it takes the time it takes. Yeah. You can't really speed that up anymore. If you do, you become sloppy. Yeah, we can wear long johns. Yeah, exactly. For Christmas. Well, yeah, or no pants <laughs> like we do every day. Or no pants. Yeah. And then, and then you've got those tiny little things. You know, when I, when I was with my pockets, the thread was darker. Uh, because the thread that we've been sewing with, which is the thread that came with the vest or that we mm. purchased for the vest, the stitching on the pockets, it was too dark. So the line was very clear. And then Arne found... It was in your face. It was really in your face. And then Arne found another thread uh, in a more neutral color. Yeah. Um, and, and just by changing that stitch to that lighter color made all the difference. Yeah. So it's always those little details. Mm. Huh? But it's... Uh, we don't have, I don't really have many hours during the day to work with this. No, that's another problem. Because the sun is up really late and it's getting dark again so early. Mm. So, and we don't have good light in the yeah. room where we work. So it's, it takes a little bit more time because of the winter time. Yeah, but it does. We yeah. will so, make it. so pretty much, pretty much we start, you know, if, if we start sewing, it's around 9 a.m. And mm. by 3 p.m., we have to stop. We have good lighting in, in downstairs where we're doing it, but it, there's something about this time of the year and working under mm. electricity or electrical lights that is very tiresome because you really feel, you know, at four, four o'clock when it starts getting dark, you really feel tired. Mm. And then if you just turn on the lights and keep working uh, by experience, and we know that now, it doesn't work. No, and then you start to do mistakes because you yeah. get tired. But this, for me, it's like I wake up early, so for me, it's kind of I can do other things like this week yeah. I've been and I took out the knitting I did when we went on the knitting cruise oh wow let's yeah. see because I decided I should finish the sweater let's see something strange happened oh I love that one that's like the mashup of all the different patterns yeah. knitted on the round yeah and I'm using yarn from this collection we did with Schockenmeyer like a knit and mix collection so yeah. there's like no plan it's just one I made a drawing of like one design or one pattern and I just repeat it and it's all different qualities of yarn there's different there's yeah. like merino there's alpaca but they're all dk and as long as they're all the same thickness you can use them on the same needle i yeah. mean in theory but, anyway but the yarn is you can you can use them on the same needle but some of the yarns are more bulky some are more hairy some are more shiny mm. so you know what i have uh, something happened when i was yeah. doing this i don't know what but i think i was very relaxed when we went on that cruise mm. because the tension i had when we were on the cruise was kind of a little bit loose and it's like i didn't care about the bulky yarn i, I was thinking that's fine it can mm -hmm. be bulky and then i started to knit this week okay <laughs> And it came out so look at it. Yeah. Look at this oh, yeah. and this. Oh wow, yeah, you've been really relaxed here. So too the, much wine. Uh, yeah. Look at the this top part. The tension it looks like it's more machine knitted. Yeah. This is more hand knitted, so, more bulky. Question, what are you gonna do? Question. What I'm gonna, gonna take out what I made and I'm gonna change to a bigger needle and see if I can get back to my old tension. Oh, okay, so you're gonna take out this little part on the top. Yeah, take out this part and then I put it on the needle four millimeter because this is a 3.5. No, this is a four, I need the 4.5 mm. and see if I can make it looser. Yeah. Or else I have to unravel everything because something happened. I was, oh. I guess I was so relaxed. Yeah, probably. So I have to say something. I have an absolute thing for purple. I love purple and I'm loving that rib. Here, look at that rib. Can you see that? It's better here. Mm. No, and I'm I loving that purple. See it from there. Yeah, there you go. And I'm loving this purple pattern here. This one here. And this is nice. It's just so I like beautiful. to do this because then I get rid of a lot of yarns instead of having them in boxes everywhere. It's gorgeous. But then this turned out so bad for me. Mm -hmm. So, and I also started the sleeves. I'm almost up 
<laughs> I'm almost finished the sleeves. So this week I just put, I had to put it away and I took out a lot of other yarns. So I started a new oh. leftover yarn sweater. And again, there's no plan. This is just some old patterns we had made for a design we never did. And there's no plan in the colors, mm -hmm. but there's like pattern changing here and here's two patterns. This will be in the front and the back. Okay. And I just use what I have as long as you can see the pattern. So this is, I've done this this week. Mm, wow. And this. Yeah, it's been a it's been a busy week, huh? And talk about week. your UFOs. You've got all these UFOs. If you're new to the uh, lingo, UFO means an unfinished object. And we have a lot of them. And actually, we got some stuff in the mail that actually really made me think of UFOs because they look like UFOs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That we have to uh, yeah. open. Yeah, and we're gonna do some unboxing today. We've got these things that we got um, that we wanted to show I you. I think guys. they're kind of cool, but we haven't tried them. No, I thought why don't we try them here? Yeah. So we got these gifts from Prim, um, and this one's called the Yarn It, um, and you can see it looks like a it but looks you like a the box UFO. Because then you can see it in the on the camera. Yeah. If you put the box under. And then we got this one as well. This is called the Big Sully, as you can see here, Big Sully, and they are tools that Prim believes is going to make our life easier. easier. So this is for one ball. So are you going to unbox them both? or You can open the one with two balls. I think that that's for two balls of yarn. Yeah. This one is for one ball. So let's look at both of them. Start with yours. Yeah. If I can open it. It's like Christmas. I get very impatient. I'm like, open the gift. Open you don't have gift. to destroy the box. Maybe we have to destroy it. We should have a scissor. We're yeah. in the room with scissors. That was funny. What? I had to tell you this because we were doing a video on was it last no one Sunday where we were sewing uh, showing how to sew the blocks together mm -hmm. and I re I couldn't find my sewing needles so I had a really sharp needle I had to use the head on the needle yeah and you know a few days later I just remembered where I put all the needles and where did you put them you remember this summer we went to our friends in the south of Norway oh yeah in Fredrikstad yeah. yeah and um, we went to this second-hand shop or antique shop and I found this sewing table from the 60s. It's oh, really, yeah. really beautiful. I, re I couldn't leave it. It was full of yeah. sewing stuff from an old lady who died. And I, was, I cleaned it, I washed it and everything and I put all my sewing needles in, in the, that table. Oh, and forgot. And forgot about it. <laughs> but yeah. now I know where they are. I even found more. I've been cleaning. Happens all the time, doesn't so, it? So let's see what this is. There we go. So the yarnet, um, as, as I was saying, it looks like a UFO, UFO, right? A UFO. So you've got this bubble. Um, you have an alternative idea that we can talk about in a minute, but let's see. Take this out, and you have a compartment here where you could put sewing stuff, apparently. Mm -hmm. And then. Well, yeah, and this is also for if you want to carry it. Around. Yeah, yeah. So this is the when you open it. There's a little thing here, as you can see, um, and that is to carry it around. You could wear it like a bag. Yeah, cool, huh? That's cool. If Let's you want to see. walk around and you want to knit when you walk. Oh, it has to be this. I'm really bad at these things. <laughs> I or think no. <laughs> no. We have to. But Other way around. It's supposed to come out of this hole. Other way around. So it goes. It goes like this. That way. No, this way. Sorry. Finally. This is like an intelligence test. You know how test. to make a vest coat? Waist, yeah, I can make a waist, a waist coat. Uh, but to put a string in the plastic ball, that's harder. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> You've got your little strap so that you can. Um, you, you can, can wear it yeah. and walk around it's very with it. Fashionable. Very fashionable. Uh, and then uh, what? What do you do with it? You put a skein I of yarn. This is actually good, like for me, because I always have my yarn on the floor. Okay. So I think it's good because then you just you put the yarn inside and then it should come out. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Hang on. You have to put that there. I think. Yeah. And then it can, it can come from this side, and you just pull the yarn like this. But for me. 
since I am have always the yarn on the floor see there's another opening there and if you press it the yarn oh goes yeah that's up. very clever so if you take this off there's and then a, there's a little knot there and then you can pull the yarn from the top very clever more, yeah, yeah more practical like for me because I like to have the yarn on the yeah. floor and if you but get what happened with the yarn I don't know but if you get two of these, you could have like one each when you do your yeah, color well, work. Yeah. Oh, look. There you go. That's called a yarn barf, I heard. A <laughs> yarn barf. Yeah, that's when, <laughs> when all the yarn, when that's you pull it from the... That's probably because I started to do something with this yarn, and then I guess I put it back in the... Yeah, but center. that's what they call it. It's like when, this, when you pull from the inside and you get this whole, you know, yeah, something like that. But I think it's kind of cool. You can have this on the floor while you yeah. knit. And then there's the other one, and this one is actually bigger. It's called the Big Sully. Mm. Um, shall we have a look at this one? I like this one. This is mine. Yeah, okay. So the Big Sully <laughs> is this one, and this one seems to be for two balls of yarn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's some instructions in here that we need to see. You see here, there's, um, there's a yarn spindle, so that if you have a cone of yarn, like um, well, yeah, then you put the if you have a cone, you can see there. Then you put then you put that spindle on, but you don't need it if you're just putting the two balls of yarn. So then you just so you have a spindle on this one, and then but if for you the for a cone. But you could do this, right? You could do one do you here. Borrow my yarn. Yeah, let's do your yarn, and then it's got like the lid has got all these different uh, needles, or not needles, but so that you can figure out what needle you you have. Hole so, where you can hole. Check. So let's see. So this is needle number three and a half, number US four. So you you know that. Oh, that's cool. You have a docking station. Yeah. Look. <laughs> yeah. You put your needles. A docking station for the needles. Yeah. So you when you're not working, you can put it. Yeah. You put the needles the there, station. and they're, they're docked. And this is a gauge ruler that also closes this. Uh, and I found this was very very practical because it stretches so if your gauge is off just stretch this <laughs> And then you'll get your gauge to be right and you can cheat a little bit I so mean we're all in denial. So, I mean yeah. it is the way it is isn't it, it with is. everything in this world <laughs> It's like no, it's not me. It's the gauge. I think the plastic is like this. This is really hard You can put you can drop it on the floor, and I don't think it will break Yeah, cool so, and this is a ruler as well in the box. So yeah. So I will try this when I do my Christmas balls. See if I, if I can work with it. Yeah. So. So very cool. The yarn net and the uh, big. These are a little bit difficult because I've been knitting from the yarn. Yeah, you need so. to. What you need to do properly is to wind those balls correctly, then put them in. Wind and then, those balls. Yeah, correctly. Correctly. And then you can uh, you can do this, but, but now you're pulling from the inside and the outside. Yeah, I should pull from the inside and this. Yeah, there you go. Now it's working. Yeah, so it's, it's a great. Of, it yeah. doesn't, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a great way to keep the balls separated, yeah. the balls of yarn that you're knitting with. So yeah. Well, I, th I have to say I like the small one. I want to have used that one. Oops. I think the small one was cool. And there's another thing, if if you don't knit, you can use this as a mini greenhouse in the spring. There you go. Yeah. You see, you can put like a little soil thing, the one you buy that is dried, and you put so water on it, and mm -hmm. then it expands. So if you put that in the put that there, and you can hang hang them in the window. Very cool. So it's a knitting thing for your yarn, or it's a greenhouse. Yeah. Oh wait, there's something in there. Oh, something else? No, but it could be. There's, there's space storage there. space. So you, you can know, actually put you can put stuff in this one. Yeah, also. your uh, your measuring tape and whatever your little stitch markers. Cool. Very nice, Arne. Very nice indeed. So, big Sully and the other one was big Sully and Yarnet. Uh, we're gonna put some links um, in the description below so that you can uh, you know figure it out. They're actually very cool. Um, I'm definitely going to try this as well. See if I 
can knit without having all that mess. Yeah, that's one of the things, isn't it? When you knit and you get that Especially terrible like, mess. Especially like, because I like this, like when I knit in the morning, I like this being in the front of the computer and I can watch the news or I watch YouTube and I knit. So I, I have like, I have the, the, the film I'm watching on one side of the computer and mm -hmm. then I have my chart. Yes. And then I just sit there and you know the yarn is on the floor. Yeah. So maybe this helps. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing <laughs> to try anything once and see if I like it. And if I like it, I'll keep using it. So, uh, yeah. No, no, it's a good idea, you know, like separating your yarns, making sure that um, that you uh, don't tangle your balls uh, all the time. No. Yes. And <laughs> don't start with me again. I'm talking about balls of yarn, aren't yeah, I? I know. Every time we mention the word yarn, balls, you know, you, you start laughing like a little teenage <laughs> boy. It's quite funny. Oh, it's actually sorry. very endearing, I have to say. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's funny. Every time it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're blushing now. <laughs> oh, you're I think, painting pictures in my head. No, I'm not. I think this is a perfect oh. cue, Arne, yeah. to do our weekly segment, our genealogy story. Well, now it's your turn. Now it's my turn, yeah. So uh, take a look at this. Okay, Carlos. So, okay. how did you like my little uh, photo bombing? I think it's nice. You're like Linse Was that? Yeah, I'm fo like, you're photo popping in the picture like I'm, I did. I'm photo bombing my ancestors. Yeah. So, who was this? Tell me. Uh, about it. That is my great great grandfather and my great great grandmother in the carriage mm -hmm. uh, in southern Sweden. Which They're is a great great grandmother the one that is closest to the yeah the, the my great great parents are sitting inside their carriage and they're facing each other um and then there's a lady sitting next to my great great grandmother i have no idea who she is maybe she's a single sister of my great great grandmother or my great great grandfather their name were their names were anders and uh, christina they looked a little bit posh i have to say maybe she's the cook <laughs> who <laughs> The lady, or what they have in Downton Abbey, you know, they have these women coming into the room and they dress them in the well, morning. I don't know. What's that called? I don't know. Uh, the lady's maid, lady, I don't know. She was the lady's maid. Oh, my great, my great grandmother. No, the one behind her. Oh, uh, I, I really don't know. This is, <laughs> this is a photo um, that is in one of my, uh, the photo albums that my dad gave me. And it actually says clearly that uh, it's my great, great grandfather and my great, great grandmother. It's taken in the turn of the century, so it's from 1900. And then um, the guy who was driving the Yeah, the, the, the coachman, Carlson. Co coachman, not Carson like in Downton Abbey. No, not Carson like in Downton Abbey. <laughs> this is Carlson, the coachman, K-A-R-L-S-S-O-N. Actually, it says it. I've got the picture here in the, in the album, and it actually says, grand, uh, it says, let's see what it says. It says grand, grandfather and grandmother um in their in their carriage with black horses and the coachman carlson but i actually heard about carlson yeah. uh, long before <laughs> i got this album apparently he did an impression on my on my family he was part um, of the family he was part of the family yes um and lived with them um even after my great grandfather uh started buying motor cars mm -hmm. he he would have had motor cars and maybe a chauffeur <laughs> but uh, still there would have been um Carlson would, would have still, nice. still been there uh, living with them. So he got um, the place when he retired. He did, yes. And I have to say, this uh, you, we talk a lot about Arne's grandmother and, and the family farm that Arne comes from. Very little about my family. Um, I don't really know what to say, just that this was a different time in history. Um, <laughs> everything, you, everything, no, but Arne, everything changed after World War II. So yeah. between World War I and World War II, so much happened. In Europe, that by the end of the war of the Second World War, um, my my family didn't have this. So this is mm. this is a, a time, a, another time that I've never actually. But from the pictures I've seen, that side of your family looks like they lived in a place like Downton Abbey or something. Yes, because they, there's like they a did. lot of things. And we, who are you talking about? Who, oh, okay. Story. So my great grandfather Anders and my great grandmother Christina. Um, they had a son uh, in uh, 1857 and I actually was able to find my, if I go on my phone and I Google and I do Wikipedia or I just go um, and I write his name, Eina Sakri Son, uh, he will instantly come up because he has his own Wikipedia 
So he's, he's your grandfather? In Sweden, yes. He's my great-grandfather. So that the people was the great-great-grandparents? Yeah, so sorry, he wasn't born in 1856. He was born in 1875. I changed the numbers in my okay. head. So he was born in 1879, uh, Einar Sakirson, um, and he died in 1970, in, on September 7th. So he, I was... I was actually, I was born in August 26. So. And you find that on Wikipedia? Well, he's in Wikipedia because he was an architect. He was, he was a captain in the Navy. He was an architect and he was a painter. Mm -hmm. And he was actually quite well-known painter. Um, so yeah, he was born in 1875 into a very wealthy family. Um, and wealthy families at that time, they would send their, their sons to the military, I suppose. So he went in that route. And he had a military career as a captain in the Navy, uh, which was a very respectable thing if you were from a certain class, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't enough for him because he was very talented and very smart. So he left the Navy um, to become an architect. And he graduated from university with a degree in architecture. Um, and I don't think that my great grandparents would have studied at university, maybe maybe college. Mm. But anyway, he graduated from university uh, and that wasn't enough. Mm. Uh, he went on a grand tour as people did in those days. <laughs> if they came from certain families. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so he went to Southern Europe, he traveled in Italy and France. Um, he decided to study art in Italy and he graduated from um, the an Academy of Fine Arts in Florence, I believe. Mm. Um, it actually says in Wikipedia that it was in France, but I know that it was in Italy, and Wikipedia is not always right. And you have all painting from Italy. Is that something he brought? Yes, so my great -gra my great grandfather went on a grand tour, and he yeah. would have bought paintings and things and, and, and brought with him back to Sweden. Um, and actually he came back with an, um, a degree in fine arts. And he then became um, a painter mm -hmm. uh, and painted uh, for the rest of his life. Um, and he's in Wikipedia, which is really cool. Um, I don't know that he was a very famous painter, but he was famous enough to end up in Wikipedia. Um, and then, um, and yeah, he died uh, just a few weeks before I was born. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm reincarnated. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, because you know how to paint. Yeah, and my, grand my great-grandfather <laughs> was very artistic. He was a very artistic man. Um, he was in many ways, very modern. Mm. Um, and then he did what we do, travel around the world and then bring stuff home. So he did a lot of that. <laughs> so it's in your genes. Yes. Of. And uh, in 1904, um, he, well, he married this lady called Maria, um, who became his wife. And then they had uh, quite a lot of children. They had mm -hmm. five kids. And my grandfather, Bertil, was the oldest. Yeah. And then he had another another son called Sven, uh, a daughter called Maya Greta, um, then he had a son called Ule, and then a daughter called Karin. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, that's pretty much it. And then my great... That's cool. And yeah. then my grandfather married my grandmother, my grandmother <laughs> had a child, which was my father, <laughs> and, and so on and, and on. You and came, on. but you had the... You had yes, paint I did. It's not a painting. It's aquarelle. It's, yes, and it's not actually. I don't think he would approve of this being framed uh, <laughs> because it's not. But you don't have a lot of these pieces. No, I don't. But it's and and it's not. So this is. It's not really. Um, it's not a finished painting. Actually, it's it's just a study, um, and it's nice because it's painted by my, by my great grandfather Einar, uh, and this is uh, the view from their house. I think this is their main residence. They had a summer house too. But I think but this is from their bigger. main main house. <laughs> sorry, um, and this is my grandmother. Uh, my oh, sorry, my great grandmother is sitting on um, on the chair, uh, and then there's a baby on the ground. That is my father's aunt, mm -hmm. Maya Greta. Yeah. Uh, and then the little boy looking out the window is my grandfather. You should there. write that on the back so people know. Yeah, yeah, maybe I should. So yeah, so so uh, my grand my great grandmother. Uh, who was my great-grandfather's wife, uh, and two of their kids, my grandfather and one of his sisters. And yeah, so um, I kind of get an idea when I see these little paintings and things that my great-grandfather did. I get an idea of, of their... The house looks... Of their daily life. Yeah, it looks the, nice. Uh, the front porch or the... Well, I don't know what this is. Is it like a flower room? <laughs> Garden? And here I've got a photo. I'm going to show you this. So this is 
This is a this is my great grandfather, um, and he's painting uh, one of my father's uncles. So one of my grand uncles uh, is being painted by my by my great grandfather, as you can see there. And I just want to show you, since I was speaking of my grandmother, great grandmother, and my grandfather, I'm show you a photo taken um, also at the turn of the century uh, in 1906. This is what my grandmother and my, sorry, my great grandmother and my grandfather looked like in 1906. And you remember when we moved up here the first, I think it was the first winter, you were doing aquarelle painting. Yes, yes, yeah. And I said, you should do something with this. But mm. you didn't. You did it no. like for one winter. Yeah, and I, I, know. I kept them. I have them somewhere in the shop. Yeah, shelf. no, I mean, yeah. I, uh, it's something all my family. I mean, my, gra my great grandfather uh, um, was an artist, uh, well known, and ended up in Wikipedia. Uh, my grandfather worked, he was a tradesman. Mm. Um, he bought and sold stuff. And uh, he uh, painted as a hobby. Uh, my dad has been a hobby painter all his life. He's an engineer um, and uh, worked. So, he was in the military and also worked, had a, had a career in, um, in large multinational companies. That's why I grew up mm -hmm. abroad. And uh, yeah, and, and, and me, I'm, I'm working also with these creative mm -hmm. things. And people who have watched these videos before, they knew that I bought the easel. Or I won. Yeah, you, I won. You bought an easel. Yes. I won the easel. Yeah. And you have to use it. You have to. When we finish the studio, I think yeah. you should put on your painting outfit. Yeah, I <laughs> may do that. I may do that. And you can teach me because I want to know how to paint. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know how to know paint. How to I, I do. I, I know how to paint with watercolors. That's what I really like. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll show mm -hmm. you. But anyway, that's a little bit of my creative uh, great grandfather. Uh, I think that I have inherited some of his genes. I'm, I'm sure that I have inherited a lot of his uh, penchant for collecting beautiful things. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. we and, tend to do that as well. And now, now I know why we have towel napkins every day when we eat dinner. Oh, you mean like fabric napkins? Fabric napkins. Well, but that's and they're all, and you always put them like you iron them and you <laughs> fold them and we also have these silver rings that you put around the napkin and I put my napkin I take my napkin from this the silver ring and I put it on yeah. my lap every day so I know you're from a furnished home well yeah some habits are <laughs> very hard to break that's how I that that's how I was brought up yeah your name is on the silver ring you yeah know. well yeah we all had them. I have one with no name on it so this is probably for some guests or something maybe I don't yeah. know, but you have your own how how could that happen it, how can p actually parents think about these things like <laughs> is that something you got when you for like baptizing or you know what I have no idea <laughs> but the only thing I know is that my entire life um, my parents kept nagging at me especially at the table they kept telling me everything that I could do and I could not do. I was allowed to do this, I can't do that, I can't do this, you have to do that, sit straight, put your napkin on your lap, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and you know how you say, you know how you say, you're never going to be like your parents. Uh, and you're and then, getting there. And then I'm kind of like sometimes thinking, hmm, you know, if, if I tell you to sit up straight or something, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I wasn't going to be like my parents, who are, by the way, very nice. They're still alive and I love them. Uh, but yeah, all the table manners that they taught me, uh, they, they kind of, they stick. But you know how to behave, like, if we're out with people. I try. In nice places. Yeah, I you guess You know so. how to. So do you, though. And nobody told you anything. I'm learning. Yeah, but nobody told you anything and you, you know anyway. I was told a lot of things. Yeah. Eat your food. Be quiet. Yeah. Or else we throw the food away. Oh. Or we give the foods to the pigs. They said that? No. No. <laughs> of course not. They would have never thrown any food away in your home. I, know, I knew your mother, huh? Oh, no, no. That's <laughs> why I eat everything. I eat everything. Yeah. They made you, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, okay. my, my, one thing my parents always told me is the eye wants more than the stomach. And whatever you take... From the plate, from the from the di you, from the serving plate, whatever you take from there, you have to eat. And they, they always said, take a little, and then if you want 
a little more, you wait until the plate comes around a second time and then you can take a second portion. Mm. Um, yeah. But it's kind of cool. Things like, like that. With your background, look. Like if people have seen this uh, TV series, what's that called again? That for Christmas, the um, funny. Oh, the oh, the Ingmar Bergman. Uh, the Ingba Ingmar Bergman. Funny, funny, or Alexander. Yeah. When I see the pictures in your photo album, and when when I hear the stories from your family, I have this picture yeah. in my head that your great, your grandparents, must have lived in a place like that. Yeah, yeah, my and grandparents were funny and Alexander yeah, in a way. they grew up in, yes. in, in the time. Hopefully with more loving uh, step-parents. No, they didn't have step-fathers. <laughs> no, didn't have st no. <laughs> um, hopefully yeah. with more loving uh, adults than those in, in funny and Alexander. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it was another time. You know what, That that's just history. Um, but I think it's nice. It's nice to remember. It's nice to, like, I think it's important to know your history. Yes. And I think it's important it's important for everyone to know history yeah. and know what happened in the past because you can learn from it so you don't do maybe the same mistakes no, that's or true, you yeah. can you can actually learn a lot about yourself because you inherit mm -hmm. some things you actually yeah, inherit I, I, I strongly believe you inherit um, Interests. you inherit your family's skills in a way mm. i think that sometimes you inherit their profession i feel that i am i never i was not a military person my dad would have loved it if i were <laughs> uh, but i did my military service and i failed miserably at that i wasn't good at that um so i didn't inherit that but i inherited the artistic sides of my of my family of my and i think my father he would have rather i i mean i, I did graduate from university i have a degree in political science um but and I think my dad wanted me to become a diplomat or something very posh. And uh, when I was studying, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do this. But the moment I, I finished with that, I said, okay, I, I've got my degree and now I can pursue something that will really make me happy. And here we are today, right? Yeah. So we're in a living, living, uh, doing what we love the most and being creative every day. Um, I'm, I know that my father was very nervous and very worried in the beginning. How is this going to go? He really wanted me to get a job. You know, why don't you get a real job was something I, <laughs> I kept hearing for some time. Uh, but now he's very proud of us and very proud of everything we have achieved. And I think that, I think that he was worried that I would have been a starving artist. Mm. And I think that in your family, there's been that too. And I think next week we can talk a little bit about how maybe our paths were going parallel because I believe in that too. Yeah, maybe. How it was yeah. meant for us to meet. We were meant to meet. Maybe. And we can talk about that next week yeah. in our in our new segment of uh, my genealogy story. You can <laughs> yeah. tell a little story and then we can see if there's some, some parallel parallels. some parallel lines, you know, that we were kind of in two parallel universes mm -hmm. and that one day we were supposed to meet. Yes. I, I do believe there's yeah. a purpose with everything in life. Okay. Very deep, so, huh? Well, you're so deep. So, so what can we do now? We were like, we, we should talk. With more, we here. talk half an hour, don't we? Yeah, uh, our little podcast is usually about half an hour. Uh, I seriously doubt we have ever been able to keep it at half an hour. Uh, so there you are. Yeah, and what more can we say? I, I'm like, now I'm like, I want to do some genealogy. Yeah, I'm inspired. So yeah, we'll be we'll so be. So I'm, I'm kind of I'm losing it right now. Yeah, we'll be back. To, <laughs> we'll be back next week with a new uh, a new sorry a new genealogy episode. But we have a new block. Yes, we do. But it's always a new block. We're still working on that the leftover yarn, so we're still doing the blocks. And there's a new very story. pretty. This this flower is this is old flower. It can be old. You can call it old flower. Okay, old flower. It's related to another flower we have already made, which has green leaves under. Mm -hmm. So it's something similar. This one actually came up when we were working with the project in Trondheim, which we said we should talk about later. Yes. And we, we talked about going to Trondheim, but, but we're not. But we probably won't do it right now because no of the situation. So this was like the first uh, thing we made. Mm -hmm. for that project and we didn't use it but it ended up on the block okay perfect so this is the so old the flower block. and old, all an old flower and all you need to do is uh, go to arnacarlos.com visit the blog look at today's post which will be sit and knit episode i believe it's episode 10 now 
um, and then click on episode 10, you will see a photo of this. And when you click on the photo, it will download the chart automatically. And then if you keep reading the text, there's the pattern for the, for the blanket. And you also got all the other charts. We're getting closer to 40 now. I think maybe we are at 40. Mm -hmm. um, and what's going to happen is um, for the next two weeks, so for all Wednesdays in November, there's going to be a chart again. But after that, uh, we're going to go over into Christmas ball knitting. So this is chart 40, I believe. And there's going to be a chart 41, chart 42. And those are going to be the two last charts in 2020. And then maybe in 2021, we will resume and publish more charts. We were going to think about it. <laughs> yeah, because we have to finish that blanket. Yeah. But what we know for sure, what we know for sure is that um, starting December 1st, we are going to be knitting Christmas balls. And that is what is going to be done here and hopefully you will join us in that knit along which we guarantee is going to be a lot of fun you already may have purchased our christmas ball calendar for 2020 we have pre-released it only to the people that subscribe to our newsletter uh, they received an email um, last sunday um, with the possibility to pre-buy uh, the calendar um, if you are not on our mail list but wish to pre-purchase it you are still able to do it because on Sunday, again, we'll send a new email um, or probably, shall we do it on Sunday? No, we're going to do it on Monday. We'll send out a new email on Monday uh, and uh, I think it's the 16th on Monday. So we'll send a new email on Monday and you can, uh, again, purchase uh, the calendar if you missed it. Um, and if you don't do it on Monday, then you can do it again from November 22nd. It will be available for everyone to purchase. Uh, but if you purchase it now, you get a little discount. And then, uh, starting December 1st, we are going to be popping in every day on YouTube. Yeah. And we're going to tell you a little Christmas story from Norway. And we are going to reveal the Christmas ball of the day, which is going to be equivalent to the calendar. So if you want to start early and knit now, you can do that. Or you can wait until December 1st and knit together with us. Um, and Norway, in Norway, are knit, sitting, knitting and telling stories. Mm -hmm. We have long traditions That's for doing that. Thing. Yeah. It's a thing. Knitting and storytelling. Knitting and storytelling. So we promise you we're going to be telling you uh, great stories uh, every day in we December. Hope. We hope <laughs> you will love our little stories. It's going to be quick. It's going to be like, um, like a 10 minute. So when I say 10 minutes, it's probably going to be 30 minutes, right? But it's going to be like 10 minute uh, posts or, or YouTube films every day. And then on Sundays, we're in addition going to have our, our usual Sunday episodes. So you get double dose of us on Sundays. Yeah. I hope you don't get too tired of us. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, going to be super exciting. Can't wait to start knitting the balls and uh, telling the stories. And putting it on the tree. And putting them on the tree every day. And, uh, be nice. and as I said last week, I do believe that uh, lockdown uh, is going to happen again in many countries. And I believe our Christmas this year is going to be very different from usual. So I think that uh, an activity like that is going to keep us all sane and entertained. Uh, we will at least, we will look good from the waist and up. Oh yeah, wearing, well, <laughs> wearing this. Well, we're not going to wear these every day, are we? No, but for Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, uh, maybe, yeah. But anyway, so, so <laughs> there you have it. A little Christmas uh, activity for all of you from us. Mm -hmm. um, that we hope you'll enjoy. You'll learn a little bit about uh, how we prepare for Christmas in Norway. Yeah. You will learn uh, stories from our past Christmases, maybe from our ancestors, and maybe things that we do today that are like new traditions. Yeah. We'll see what happens because We've, we have yeah. a story. We have a story ball. for each ball. So uh, yeah. stay tuned more, for that. We have more coming up. Yeah. Can you remind people if they want to see? Yeah, we have more coming up uh, on uh, Saturday. November 14th at 12.30, so noon 30 uh, Eastern time, so New York time. We're doing Vogue uh, knitting live, yeah. but it's virtual. Yeah. We're doing a keynote address, um, and um, if you want to join in, I'm sure there's tickets available for that. So that is on November 14th. And then on November 25th, we are doing a, an event with Selvedge magazine in the UK. That's about Norwegian... That's about Norwegian knitting, knitting. and the fantastic Anne Sundberg, who is 
the only person you need to know in Norway when it comes to knitting, uh, especially cultural history, the history of knitting, she knows everything. And we talked with her on the phone and she said one of her books are now out again in English. Oh, so we're going to get get that Which information one? as well. Which one? She will probably tell us. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, you don't want to miss that evening of no of, of Norwegian or Scandinavian actually Scandinavian knitting. You don't want to miss that with Anemur Sundberg and Arne and me. And there's another designer, I think Cecilia Tell. I'm, I think it is. I'm not mm -hmm. really sure. But anyway, uh, if you go to our blog, you get links there so that you can click yourself and and, <laughs> and figure out the rest. Okay. So do we have a word of the day? Vilsvin. Vilsvin, yes. Uh, <laughs> That's the a wild... word you really need that word. Yeah, so you need that word in your in your vocabulary. Wild boar. We're going to put that as well in our blog post. <laughs> do you remember to put these words in the blog post? I do, yes. Oh, you're good. Yeah. And I think uh, we've done it. We've covered everything because... we wanted to cover. I, I wanted to tell some more folk costume stories, but we are running out of time now that we've spoken just slightly over 30 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna go now and look at my genealogy and I'm gonna leave the sewing for today, yeah, and look for a story that is gonna be parallel yeah. to my story. Oh, I have one already, okay, yeah. so we'll look forward to hearing <laughs> it again, maybe next week. Next week, so yeah, this is it, Arne. Formalities, uh, if you like our videos, put your thumbs up and give us some comments if you have feedback for yeah, us. If you, yeah, and we love engagement, yeah, and you read the comments, oh, yeah. yeah and put on your notifications because then you will have a message every time there's a new video out and yeah, if you click on the bell yes. subscribe if because that's helpful that's very helpful and if you're on the mailing list you get the link to the ball yeah the new balls yes so that's pretty much <laughs> it thank you so thank much you. for watching it's been a pleasure hanging out with you we hope you've enjoyed this episode and we hope to see you again next week. See you. Bye. Bye.